Hey, Cryptozins. Tonight's show. Celsius lays off 25%. UK and US to cooperate on crypto regulation. And Meta kills Novi. It's 10 p.m. Pacific. The date is July 3rd, 2022. Welcome back to the Crypto Overnighter. My name is Nicodemus, and I will be your host. The cover model, mascot, and co-host for this podcast is Tex. And together we take a nightly look at the crypto, NFT, and metaverse space and the industry that surrounds it. So take a minute, go ahead and subscribe to the podcast now because we're here at 10 p.m. every night so that when you leave in the morning, you're taking with you the crypto news analysis that you need to start your day. And keep in mind, nothing in this show should ever be considered financial advice. Dramatic shift in macroeconomic conditions worldwide. That's the reason Celsius gave for laying off 150 of their staff members. And those 150 staff members represent 25% of Celsius's full-time employee account. Now, this report comes from calcalstech.com. And the team at Wu Blockchain tweeted out the news to their 230,000 followers. They said, quote, Lending platform Celsius has laid off about 150 employees, including those in Israel, according to Israeli media Calcalistech. The layoffs represent about a quarter of Celsius's total workforce. Many of Celsius' business are run by third-party platforms. So this was probably not a shock to anyone. You know, Celsius is really taking a beating. A couple weeks ago, they hired a law firm, um, Aiken, Gump, Strauss, Hauer, and Feld, LLP, to act as their restructuring advisors. So they're supposed to be advising Celsius as far as how to handle their current financial issues. Earlier this month, Celsius put forth three proposals to rebuild their business. And these proposals were really put forth by Bank to the Future Capital. And they described themselves as, quote, a global online investment platform, financial innovation, including fintech, financial technology companies, funds, and other new alternative financial products. But for the purposes of our show tonight, the most important characteristic is the 5% of Celsius shares that they're holding. So they get some weight in this discussion. In an attempt to build long-lasting solutions for Celsius, they proposed three things. One, restructure and relaunch Celsius network. Throw in some upgrades, maybe. This protects depositors by allowing them to benefit from any recovery through financial engineering. Two, get the biggest Bitcoin whales together and build a pool to co-invest with the community, similar to the response of the Bitfinex in 2016. And three, they offered a plan to let this new version of Celsius rebuild and make their depositors whole. Now, Simon Dixon is the CEO of Bank to the Future Capital. According to him, traditional finance is not going to cut it. A couple or three weeks ago, he posted the company blog. And in his post, he said, quote, I believe traditional finance will not have a timely solution for Celsius, as we saw in the past with Mt. Gox, that still remains unresolved 10 years later. I believe that this can only be solved with a solution using financial innovation like we did with Bitfinex that was resolved within nine months and worked out very well for depositors. It remains to be seen whether the layoffs taken by Celsius, combined with the proposals put forth, whether that's going to fix Celsius's confidence problem. Because there's been no updates from them for three weeks now. No real updates. A couple of days ago, they published a statement that said that they are, quote, focused and working as quickly as we can to stabilize liquidity and operations. This does not inspire people. I think most people have just mentally written that money off, feeling like they'll never get it back. But so far, there's been no real movement. Other than laying off a bunch of people, they haven't done much. I'm wondering if that's their choice or if they're acting under advice of counsel because they hired Alvarez and Marcel to be their insolvency consultants. So maybe that's why they're not talking. I don't know that that's a good plan, though. Right now, people know that FTX bailed on Celsius. They were in talks about some financial aid, kind of like SBF is doing with Voyager and BlockFi. That is until someone saw the $2 billion hole in the middle of Celsius's finance. And then rumors that Alex Mashinsky was going to try to leave the country? Yeah, that didn't help either. Goldman Sachs is trying to raise the $2 billion to buy Celsius's crypto at a discount. And 
Nexo also made an offer. They offered to buy those assets as well. So clearly, the Celsius narrative continues. Well, it was another day of thin trading, not much volume or action, which is kind of what you expect on a Sunday before a holiday Monday. You know, at the time of writing, the global crypto market cap is $873.66 billion. It's up 0.55% in 24 hours. The top five cryptos by market cap are Bitcoin up 0.28%, Ethereum up 0.83%, Tether, USDC, and Binance Coin up 0.79%. Regulators and officials from the U.S. journeyed across the pond to attend the U.S.-U.K. Financial Innovation Partnership. Her Majesty's Treasury hosted this summit with the U.S. Treasury Department at the end of June. And in its conclusion, both sides agreed that they need to partner up to foster safe innovation and build stronger regulatory outcomes. Specifically, they were talking about cryptocurrency and digital assets. And they're going to need some help, to be honest. You see, Bitcoin was designed, it was engineered, to avoid governmental influence and interference. It was developed as a response for third parties trying to control cross-border transactions, for one thing. Now, crypto is not meant to hide your money. There are certain privacy coins that are into that, though. Monero and Zcash are a couple of examples. But that's not the whole of crypto. Crypto is designed to be resistant to outside influence. It's slippery like that. In order to stop crypto, you'd have to control the validation process to some degree. 51%, two-thirds, whatever. And it's going to be different per scheme. And you'd have to do that for every single coin out there. The point is, it's effectively impossible to stop crypto without crippling our communication systems like the internet. And crypto regulations have been a widely covered topic for discussion of late. Crypto regulations even made their way into G7 and G20 talks. So they're going to have a hard time anyway. But the fact crypto is all over the headlines in the middle of a huge market crash, recession, depression, whatever you want to call it, that really ups the urgency on getting regulations in place. And so it came to pass that folks from the SEC, the CFTC, Bank of England, and Financial Conduct Authority met for this discussion. They're not planning on this being a one-off. It sounds like they're set to have dialogues like this in the future. They said, quote, UK and US participants also considered future opportunities for further discussion on broader crypto asset regulatory initiatives and considerations as their respective policy and regulatory agendas progress. Now, the UK and the US both said that they're going to be working together to establish, quote, robust cross-border regulatory cooperation. They said that cooperation to provide a regulatory framework for stable coins and exchanges, that cooperation is going to be figuring heavily in future meetings. And mostly this was about two things, stable coins and CDBCs. One of the major concerns is the stable coin space. Now, stable coin is kind of an unassuming thing. It might not really think much about it. You put a dollar in, you get a dollar out. Always. It's boring, predictable. When it works. That's not what they're worried about. They're worried about what happens when it doesn't work. They're worried about, quote, key role of stablecoins and crypto asset trading and lending platforms, which, you know, take a look around the crypto space right now. They're not wrong to be concerned. A story we were talking about tonight, Celsius, that's one of those lending platforms that they're talking about. Terra Luna, Celsius, 3AC, that drama is what they're worried about. And the other one, the other side, the ugly side because they did meet to talk about CDBCs too. Not a big surprise, really. The Bank of International State Settlements has said that 9 of 10 central banks are working out how to launch their own CDBCs. And bankers are eagerly taking on that role, that of governing a digital currency. And while they didn't announce much in the way of policy or regulatory changes, they did point out one difficulty with CDBCs is going to be interoperability. Because they're all separate. Separate rules, separate laws, separate governments. And the individual banks are going to have to figure out how to make cooperative systems that work together. Or maybe they come together and form a central central bank. One central bank for the planet with one CDBC to rule them all. That doesn't sound good. I'll stick with crypto things. 
the global NFT market cap is slightly over 11 billion. Sales volume is down, statistically flat though, in 24 hours. According to CoinMarketCap, the top five NFT collections by sales volume are Bored Apes, followed by CryptoPunks, Mutant Apes, Other Deed, and Moonrunners. Now, please keep in mind, some of these collections have very volatile prices. So please, do your own research. Meta killed Novi. And in doing so, they brought an end to a three-year-long experiment. An experiment that saw Libra become DM and saw Facebook become Meta. And it was a pretty ambitious plan. Doomed, but ambitious. And now it's over. Meta announced the news on the Novi website. September 1st, they're shutting down Novi. Right now, they're busy getting the word out. They're texting the Novi users a link to the announcement. And they're telling people right now, get your money out as soon as possible. Their words, as soon as possible. And their website is pretty clear. You can withdraw your money to a bank account. Or if you're in Guatemala City, you can withdraw it as cash. And then they explain the artifacts and the identification papers and stuff that you'll need to do that. The next stage comes on July 21st. Because at that point, no more deposits to the Novi wallet. After that, it's September 1st, and Novi's WhatsApp account and their Novi app will both stop working. When those go away, it's over. You won't have access to your transaction data and your history. And this is important. You can request a copy of your Novi app information, but if you do that, you have to do it before September 1st. Once the pilot ends, they're not taking any more requests to get your Novi information out to you. So, this Libra DM saga has had its twists and turns. Back in 2019, Novi was introduced to people as Calibra. And Calibra was intended to be the wallet for their Libra stablecoin. Libra being the original name for DM. That was their plan, to introduce Libra as a stablecoin. They were going to back their stablecoins with a, quote, basket of assets consisting of fiat currencies. That didn't go well. In fact, a group of Democrat senators wrote a letter to Mark Zuckerberg, quote, immediately discontinue the company's pilot of Novi. They wanted all work to stop on their stablecoin project. And I tell you what, they were not gentle in their dismissal. This is back in November. We urge you to immediately discontinue your Novi pilot and co to commit that you will not bring Diem to market. The fact is they don't trust the Zuck. And they made no bounds about that either, pointing out the times that they feel like Meta has misled them in the past. I think the real biggest bomb was this. Quote, In addition to the risks products like DM pose to financial stability, you have not offered a satisfactory explanation for how DM will prevent illicit financial flows and other criminal activity. Now, personally, I wouldn't have reacted well to that letter. They'd have to come up with something signed by a judge to stop me. But that's just my nature. It's not Meta's, though. They did the smart thing. They did the wise thing. They changed their plans. A lot. So they scaled Novi back. It became a money transfer pilot for crypto-based payments. That pilot never got beyond the borders of the U.S. and Guatemala. All that said, this isn't the end for Meta's crypto plans. You know, they've got the whole Metaverse thing going on. And they're already planning on building the, on the work that they started in Novi. In an email, Meta said, quote, We are already leveraging the years spent on building capabilities for Meta overall on blockchain and introducing new products, such as digital collectibles. You can expect to see more from us in the Web3 space because we are very optimistic about the value these technologies can bring to people and businesses in the Metaverse. And that's true. We know Meta is planning on supporting NFTs on Facebook and Instagram, and their Metaverse business itself will likely run on crypto in some form or fashion. So, this marks the end of Novi, but not DM though. Meta sold the DM assets to Silvergate Capital for $200 million. So, DM might end up being a real thing. DM might live, but Novi, the wallet intended for DM, is gasping its last breaths as we speak. And that's going to do it for us tonight. I want to thank you, my listeners, 
because when you stop listening, I'll stop talking. You stay safe out there. Watch out for yourselves, but watch out for each other too. We'll see you tomorrow night.